right, you guys, this is day two. I know a lot of you guys can't be here, so we're bringing the expo to you. We've got some great walk arounds today. We're gonna see some other products and we're just gonna try and bring the expo into your living room and check out some of these awesome builds. And another thing, today we can actually talk to people because the wind went from 65 miles an hour to it's only 45 today. All right, let's go. Are we rolling? Are you, you got little meters going back and forth? Right on. So you guys, hey, I'm here with, with Pierre of Loki Box Design. Loki Base Camp is right. what we're talking about today, exactly. right? Exactly. And Corey yesterday came by this rig and saw it and was like, this thing looks amazing. So this is a fairly new design. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yeah, your yeah. company yeah. and what you guys do? Loki Base Camp was kind of continuation of helping guys doing spinter van conversion, but we figured right. that to reinvent the pickup yep. camper was something we can do. We uh -huh. have a lot of expertise already with battery, solar, all the technology involved. So for us... The, well, what you used to do your, and your background, that's a whole other amazing yeah. topic. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, like you said, so many different materials, technologies, batteries yeah, and, yeah. and everything. And, and the reason why we get involved into Overland is because it was most of the team that was their lifestyle, that was their <laughs> right. life. So let's, let's do something that we can also live yeah. out of it. You know? Yeah, so, absolutely. So basically, right now, it's, this is the e Okay. but it's, you know, you'll see it, you know, later on the original one in you know, that we start with. Right. But it's, the, you know, we designed this one. It's a, it's a new one that we launched a few months ago, I will say, but first time in a show, basically. Right. So, so this is sort of an unveiling yeah, for yeah, the, yeah. the general public. Exactly. Now. Great. And, and for us, you know, even if we're used to export, yep. uh, we're based out of Quebec City, Canada. Uh -huh. So winter is just crazy winter. Right. And summer, it's kind of hot as well. So we're yeah. used to do to work with the extreme. So we had to develop something that was, I know everybody's seeing four season. Right. But on our hands, it's R16 and above uh -huh. and the insulation. And um, <clears throat> it's, it's well tested, right. I can say, you know. So. Right. Well, I know everyone watching loves to see new builds yep, yep. and they love to learn about new things on the market. So this is, this is exciting. Um, tell Can I us go a, through it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the build. Yeah. 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 So <clears throat> the, the Icarus series is basically our fiberglass series. Yep. And so we took something that was already existing on the market. You know, it's usually being used for plumber, electrician, and it, you know, I've never seen anyone really converting that. Right. So we said, you know, why not using that structure? And um, yeah, like a, every time we're purchasing one, the regular one, like just to give an example, the roof capacity or the structure capacity is 300 uh, pounds capacity. Right. But we're rebuilding a frame inside, kind of a skelet somehow. Yep. And um, that we bring that to 1,500 pounds. So it's, right. it's we're really reinforcing the thing, right. and uh, we're adding insulation, we're adding everything. You'll see in, in, after that inside. Yep. And um, yeah. That, with Look, that insulation, that's really one of our big strengths. Well, so one thing that's immediately apparent, we'll see the, the fit and finish on the inside, uh, is uh, that this thing is, is luxurious. It's really, really nice. Yeah, you yeah. have a, you, like the name implies, you have a base camp away from home. You're yeah, really exactly. Nice. So it's, it's really, That really was the cool. purpose of the name and everything. I know it's yeah. kind of cliche, that name base camp, yeah. but you know, at some points we, we can- it fits. We, yeah, it fits and yeah. we can, we try to find something else, but it's a base camp somehow. You yep. know, we're not building a structure that, that you can add stuff for your sports. It's really built for your adventure, you know? Right. So that's, this is what we're offering with accessories that fits with it. It's really for the active lifestyle, overland lifestyle, right. for sure. So this is the inside of the Icarus 8, the long uh -huh. bed version. Um, basically the main difference between the short bed and long bed, where I'm sitting right now, we like to call it the mud room section, yep. where you have like an extra seats. Um, <clears throat> There's, there's a bin that can be here. We can set like a collapsible shower. Uh -huh. um, and since it's based for your adventure, all your fishing stuff can sit here, Terrific. your hiking boots, whatever. So the short bed version, it's only that we remove that portion. So kitchen right. remain the, the same. Uh, even if it's kind of custom what we do, the layout remain the same because of all the mechanical aspect. But you right. can choose all your finish, your wood, your color, everything. So this one has been set like this, but we have Tons of possibility, yes. So you work with your customer to define the fit and finish according to what yeah. they, they to fit they with want. their truck, right. fit okay. with the, the other Great. rig they have. Yeah. You know, there's a big buzz about the, uh, the bed system uh -huh. uh, to, to change the, the bed of the truck, to add more storage on the side. Yeah. The unit will fit into it, so it's... Great. Yeah, Great. yeah, exactly. And so inside, since 
um, all the technology is something that we was used to work with, um, we really mainly rely on all the electricity. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's no gas, nothing. It would be possible, but at the same time, uh, we use a lot of lithium batteries. Yeah. So speaking of that, a base unit is one battery, but if you want to add uh, optional EC, yep. it's two batteries that we're adding. 12 volt EC, 12 volt edit floor, 12 volt fridge. Um, we try to find a way, actually not try, but it's really a product that you never need to plug it. It's self-sufficient with a solar panel, right. the type of battery, and can you diesel eater. Can yeah. you tell me how many? Oh, it's got a diesel heater. Diesel eater as okay. well. And just for you to know, it's yep. not, it can be connected to your truck, but it's not on a regular right. uh, offer. Because if you want to remove the box and put it in your, close to a river, whatever, without the truck, it yeah. will live by itself. Well, so, if, what about sleeping capacity in here? Yeah, um, in the carousaries, in this actual build, um, it's a full uh, double size bed yep. that you pull you know, mm -hmm. to have access to it. And uh, there's also a third you know, single bed here in, right. a lo in, a, in a long bed version. The short bed version, uh, we get rid of the mud room, but also it's not, a, it's not a bed anymore. So it's more like a sofa size. Yep. Uh, so it's two in the short bed version. So we're working on an extended version somehow. So right. a, you know, a one foot higher. So for people that <clears throat> will prefer to have that. And also the front portion will be push forward. So you're not gonna have to pull the bed somehow. Great. So that's, you know, we really like the feeling out of this build and we want to, uh, to you know, to propose options somehow. Yeah. Right. It, it see, I'm looking at the thickness around all of the openings. It seems very well insulated. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's very, yeah. It's very and, and, thick. And insulated is really for the extreme, you know. Right. Like, like I said, our winter are just crazy. And with the heated floor and diesel eater, we want really to feel the right. cocoon aspect and, and not having, it, it's a real four season. But at yeah. the same time, that insulation, when it's super hot, like a, above the 100, it's it's good as well, you know. Right. With the AC, it's keep its freshness. Yep. So you know, great. This is more like our, our signature portion of what we do, you know. Great, Pierre. What else should we know about this build or your company? What else should we talk about? Um, this is our Icarus build. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's reached a certain budget, and that's for yep. people that wants to have like a, a smaller truck, lighter, more agile, yeah. more for kind of off road somehow. Yeah. Um, so there's, you know, you'll see after that uh, another series that is a bit bigger um, and we're about to release next year. That's that's what we're working on right now. Yeah. Uh, a, a bigger version because when people wants to have like a, a shower and a bathroom enclosed right. uh, and have a bit more room. So this is what's coming in for us in the next uh, few months, I'm going to say. So we have a great unveiling and more things to come. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate Perfect. it. Hey you guys, I'm here with Nick, uh, our friends at 7P Overland. Nick, y you and I have been in the rain and the mud at the expos here since like 2016 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and the wind, don't forget the wind. And the wind, yeah, you yeah. always get something. That's right. When you come to a, a, an expo. Um, at the highest level for folks who don't know, so many people want to go out there and explore now. Yeah. And there's a bunch of new folks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So give us the, give us the, the quick rundown about what 7P Overland does. Yeah, well, you know, we do, we do three things, you know. Yeah. Um, we, we train primarily, that, that's, right. that's right in our heart is, is training. Getting yeah. our knowledge, our hard-earned knowledge out of our heads and into other people's. Yep. You know, and, and with the explosion in, in the popularity of overlanding here in the US, um, you know, we, we see we, we see people who are new, not, not done this before. People spending right. a lot of money on on the, all the vehicles we see here. And what you don't want to do, you don't want to go out and damage it. You don't want to you want to hurt yourself. You know, right. and, you, and people typically also want to look after the planet as well. You know, that's a consideration. So we Absolutely. teach people how to get out there. You know, we start off with a safety net, teach them some basic stuff. You know, our courses are structured, so we have a you know we do half day stuff in a parking lot. You mm -hmm. know, we might go to the pub afterwards and continue the conversation, find out what people want to do. Um, we do some really nice. Uh, single day introductory courses, one day of driving, yeah. uh, one day of recovery, and our most popular is our sort of three-day foundation course. Right. And that, that, that covers a whole breadth of things for really gives people the confidence in themselves, in their vehicle, in their equipment, right. to go out there into remote parts of the country, actually internationally too. Folks, some folks want to go around the world for the next three years, some people want to go to the lake for the weekend. Right. You know, so we see a, a whole community, a broad church of overlanders, right. and, um, and the foundation course gives people a really nice package. And then we do, after that we do advanced stuff, you know, and we, we've got complex, you know, right. rigging, winching and all that kind of 
great stuff. You know, half a dozen polys in the system, and and, a, and, a, and an afternoon of winching for that. And then then we move into the sort of terrain-specific stuff. You know, maybe it's in the mountains or deserts, or right. the, you know, the the favourite of a lot of people is in the in the in the forest, the rainforest, in the jungle. You know, down in Central America, Belize, or Guatemala, somewhere like that. Yeah, so, so just really worldwide. A load of stuff. Yeah, and, and the range of experiences. And I I want to uh, mention too one of the reasons I I feel like. Overland Bound 7P have sort of been kindred spirits is because we see a lot of new folks coming in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we really are a gateway and immediately it's sort of phase two. Phase one is this looks awesome. Yeah. I want to do that. Yeah. And then phase two is, oh, I need some skills, yeah. some just some basic level skills. Yeah. And I've seen your staff in 7P Overland at the, at the various expos and Guardians might be a little bit, uh, you know, strong, <laughs> but certainly people getting in trouble and you guys coming in and being very calm and yeah. saying, hey, this is what we need to do. Yeah. You know, Mudageddon on the East Coast, you know, <laughs> yeah. there was a lot of help there. Yeah. 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 So um, you said that the that the foundation course was one of your most popular courses. Yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So it's a combination of um, of of. Uh, looking at people's vehicles, um, some, right. some driving. So they bring their vehicle. They bring that, oh, well, don't have to, but we prefer that because of course that's a vehicle right. people are going to use. Yep. And we, we, have, we have the gamut, you know. We're seeing a lot of vans uh, mm -hmm. more recently. Their vans have, have obviously just exploded in popularity. Right. So there's, there's a lot of vans and, and, and we, we love those folks. They're absolutely brand new to this sort of thing. And you know, they're, they're, actually none of these vehicles are cheap anymore. So people, right. you know, as, as you get into the, 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 the sort of price range of those things, people don't want to beast them around. You right. know, they don't want to take them out once and then, then, then you know, yeah. it's all scratched up and broken and bits hanging off. So we <laughs> right. teach people how to, you know, the core concept for us is one of mechanical sympathy. So, yes. and, and especially in a van or even just a sort of regular four by fours, um, you know, you're surviving out of it, you're living out of it, it's your house, right. it's your home. Can I do yeah. it? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Do I want to do that with my home? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although sometimes you say, you might think you don't want to do that, but let, let us show you. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you know, in the training, we, 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 we give this sort of safe space, right? There's a lot of really, you know, our instructors have, have got centuries of experience if you taught it all up, right? Right. Um, and, and, you know, having them out there and just being there to, to help people through and maybe we'll take them through something here take them from there to up here. So when yeah. they go out and they're doing this, they feel very confident, you know, with the technical terrain. I can do this, I got this, you know, right. this is no problem. I can do it, I feel confident, my vehicle's capable of doing it. The environment, you know, it's not it's not snowing rain, whatever, you know, whatever the right. conditions are, I now feel that I've taken the knowledge, you yep. know, which is the lightest piece of gear you can take with you and probably the most useful, right? <laughs> right. We give them that knowledge and then they feel very comfortable and they're not gonna wreck their vehicle, their home. Right. You know, they're gonna come back and all it's gonna need is a wash or not. Right. Some people like to keep them muddy, right? So, right. Yeah, right that, that's, that's basically what we do. We, and we focus on, you know, some, some driving techniques um, that, that really help. You know, things like left foot braking is a great one. You know, and ergonomics yeah. of the vehicle, is your seat in the right position? What can you see? Uh, all of that kind of stuff. Left foot braking. I'm not going to tell uh, people what it is, <laughs> right. but will change your life if it you will. don't understand it. If you yet. don't know, then you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll have some videos coming on that. Yeah, <laughs> left foot yeah. braking. It's, yeah. it's one of those techniques that not people think about. Right. Um, and but it's but, it, but it, it's a it's a great technique. Yeah. It just needs a bit of practice. It yeah. does. Yeah. It does indeed. Yeah. This, this yeah. it's not used to it. Not used to it. Your, right. lazy, your lazy left leg. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Of right. Course. Well, very um, good. I see some gear here. Yeah. Um. So so you guys have some you you have some gear. Um. Tell us a little bit about, about sure. that. that we, got, we got into the gear because people would ask us during training, um, you know, well, what's in a recovery kit? What sort of things do I need? Because there's, there's a lot of different stuff these days, you know? Yeah. And, um, and, and we found when we looked, there wasn't anything that we would regard as fit for purpose. You know, it lacked, right. um, lacked wasn't correctly rated. Uh -huh. um, you know, it had no markings on it, not even a country of origin. Um, and you'll notice all the stuff we sell. And, right. and, and I think hopefully, you know, a lot of the folks are now these days um, properly rating stuff, you know, with working load limits, right. you know, minimum braking strengths, that sort of thing. Um, so people said, well, where do you get your gear? And then do we just start kind of selling it? Because it right. was, we, we knew, you know, we know where our manufacturers, we work closely with people on both the, uh, you know, the aluminum or aluminum, oh, allow me to translate, yeah. right. the, the aluminum <laughs> stuff. Um, you know, we, we work with a partner in the UK who, who does very, very high end stuff with air, aircraft grade um, aluminum. You know, they, 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 they're, they're, they build winches too. Um, but our recovery rings, that's where we, you know, we get them from. And we work on the, on the sort of fiber side, the rope side, anything yep. made from, from Dyneema or similar materials. Um, we're working with a, with a, with a, a great company out of Canada, um, right. Richard, at, Richard at Freedom. And it's, it's, uh, he makes great stuff. And, he, and it, we, again, kindred spirits, right? We think right. the same way, you know, how this, how this stuff's used in the field. Because with gear, 
you know, when you need your gear, I can guarantee you it'll be night, it'll be raining, <laughs> you'll be in the mud, you'll be tired, thirsty, you won't have had a beer, right? right? You, you'll, be, you'll, you'll be the worst possible moment. So ask yourself, is that, is that when I want, um, I, oh, hey, I saved 20 bucks on my gear. Yeah. No, you want the best gear, you want it to be reliable. Absolutely. And you know what, this stuff is a little bit more expensive, but you buy it once. That's you know, right. And it, this stuff That's right. should, when, it, when, when you look after it, it'll last a lifetime. Well, and thankfully, the, the community out there is starting to get a little bit more wise about just yeah. buying whatever they can find yeah. and yeah. going for it has to be rated. You yeah. have to know where it comes from. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, yeah, that's that's And, and rated, great. ideally, you want to see the testing. You know, a lot of, a, a lot of yeah. manufacturers now are very open and transparent about how they test. Mm -hmm. So that gives you the confidence in buying your gear. Again, you know, right. selling gear for us isn't the primary thing. What we want to do is give people the ability and the knowledge to make wise purchasing decisions right. about their gear. Yeah. And in some cases, their vehicle, you know, we've had people come yeah. in our training and, and gone home and sold their vehicle and bought another one because they realized they bought the wrong vehicle too. So actually our training ends up really cheap if you're making the investment in vehicles and equipment and all that stuff. Right, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Um, so it, we like to say it, adventure is absolutely necessary have the skills to do it safely. Yeah. You guys can help out. Absolutely. You know. So how, where can people find, is it 7P Overland? Yep, 7P Overland.com. Um, and, and we've changed the way we're doing things yep. now, so it's, it's very easy to get on the website, uh -huh. um, make, make those bookings, you know, drop us, get on the mailing list is the first thing. Right. We don't, we don't, you know, we don't send a lot of email, but it's useful. It's a combination of, hey, this is what we've got coming up. You right. know, we do, we're doing more stuff in different geographies now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we've always had a primary focus around Colorado or Utah. One is because, kind of live there right and, and also it's, it's <laughs> right. awesome right. Um, very lucky to, to be able to do that but now we're expanding into Arizona um, right. you know potentially a bit more on the, on, the, on the west and as we as we we've got an instructor program as well as we bring up some of the new guys right. and gals of course um, yep. in, into the family um, and that means we can operate more in more geographies too right so you know sign up the mailing list get a few announcements get some tips you know yep. some, some some really good training tips that we'll put in there too yeah some stories travel stories of course we right do on. travel as well right i didn't even right. mention that <laughs> a, lot, a lot of good international we actually got guys down in mexico right now uh -huh. um and doing a doing a baja trip and we've got some other great stuff coming up later in the year and all that stuff start on the website and you guys do lead trips around the world so around the world very, yeah a very good thing absolutely. to mention absolutely yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. we've got we're looking forward to doing some getting back into some of the the stuff like we do in africa yeah you know, both north africa and south africa mm -hmm. um very different experiences but if you uh if you like the desert north africa is the one my favorite right on yeah. right on yeah. well nick thank That's you very yeah, much for your time pleasure. really appreciate yeah, it yeah, yeah thank Cheers. you yeah. mike it's too, cra it's too crazy here there's too many things to see this year this is the craziest expo west i have ever ever seen they have you know four five thousand Oh my goodness, like look at it, you should pan the camera and show the camera. Oh, it's Zargus, let's talk to Zargus. We got things to do, he's got people to talk right. to, Mike. We're rolling. Tell me when we're rolling. We're rolling. Okay, just tell me when we're rolling. Okay. Do you have audio? Almost there. Would you say something to make sure he's got All right, how's that sound? Can you hear me? got his. We're rolling. All right, good. All right. You guys, hey, I'm here with Olaf at Zargus Cases. We we love your cases, man. We got them on the top of the truck and it was a game changer for us. Yeah. So tell us um, tell us who you are, what you do, and tell us about your cases. All right, well, yeah. Zargus, we've been in business for 90 years. Yep. Uh, all <laughs> built in Germany. Uh, yep. We stock them all in Charlotte, North Carolina. So we've yep. got all of our all cases in, in our catalog are on the shelf there. But it's a badass case. This is yep. our K470. Yep. Uh, the K470 is actually a military case. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the one that they take to the desert, they take it to the Antarctic, throw it off the back of a Humvee, yep. and, and it's exactly the right case for overlanding. You know, right. it, it takes a lot of abuse, uh, waterproof, dustproof. Um, we've got the full piano hinge on the back, stainless steel yep. piano hinge, uh, five pound uh, latches, you know, so you can load it up, you can drop it, it's not going to pop open on you. Right. Um, and the difference between us and a plastic case, when you open up a plastic case, you have all the you know, a second layer in Some there. of them are that thick. They are, right? They are. It, to get the strength, because yeah. they're made of plastic, right? right. So right. they're that thick. Yeah. So you've got all that volume that you're gaining. Yep. Um, for this product line, we've got 26 different sizes. Everything from, you know, relatively small cases to the kind that you put up on the... On the, on the yep. Road. Yeah, right on. So I just want to underscore that. So lightweight, Yep. Mine's on the uh, on the roof rack, so you guys want to keep your center of gravity low, right? So you want the weight up there to be as light as possible. So super light case, super thin wall, very strong. Um, and then you guys even have a, a bear proof line as well, yes, we right? Yes, we do. It's so, a 470. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you put uh, salmon and peanut butter in a case and you let a grizzly bear go at it, uh, we won. The grizzly bear lost. He never got his peanut butter. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Right the grizzly bear certified. 
Cool. Uh, yeah, so they're uh, they're badass cases. Yeah, all they're, they're yeah. great. They're great. Yeah. Hey, I see a I see a kind of a matte black one over there. Do you yes, guys do you is, guys do do you guys pro, do you guys do a black a, series or yeah, it's a limited edition right now. Okay. And I think it's speaking it more and more common because people yeah. actually love it. It's a beautiful case. Yep. Yep. So, and we're coming out with a lot of other accessories and so forth. Cool. We've got a you know a, a bamboo charcuterie board and, and uh -huh. you know various internal. Uh, organizational stuff yep. and so forth. And I use your uh, your your latch system for the cases on my roof rack as well. So you guys have a little latch system. That's awesome. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. What else should we know? Well, that's it. You know, okay. it's, it's best cool. case in the world. Right and, on. Uh, you only have to buy them one time. Yeah, you that's know, it's right. It's a little painful that first time, but, but yep. they're the best case in the yep. world. You yep. know, you buy once, cry once, it saves you money in the long run. Absolutely. Yep. We've got a picture over there of one that was in service for 30 years with the U.S. ski team. Yep. You know, beat up, but uh, you know, had to beg the guy to get it from us, but, but we have it, and, and it's a great case. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Thank hey, you very so. much. Thank really you. appreciate Bye. it. Yeah. Bye. Hey, you guys, walk this way. Come here and check this out with me. This is Adventure Tool Company. I've got, this is what I use for my tool roll, and it's what I use for my electrical bag for if I need to do any electrical work. But Adventure Tool Company, awesome gear, um, and it's it's gear that's that's gonna last. I throw it off the top of the truck, it lands in the dirt, I lay down on it when I'm underneath the truck. So, a good name to know, Adventure Tool Company. Hey, Mike, are you still rolling? Yes. Okay, why don't we why don't you do a, like a pant like show them the thing? <laughs> hey you guys, so one of the things about Expo is you are going to see every single kind of rig here, but here's something I want you to keep in mind. Do not be overwhelmed. Literally, run what you brung throw it in the back and get outdoors. Now, if you guys love it, you guys find out, oh my goodness, this is my jam, then you can always start to upgrade your equipment. We've been, Corey? Yeah? How many years have we been working on the, the, <laughs> the rig? Since, Since 20... Since we started dating. Yes, for, for a long time, and it's just now getting dialed. So if, if, if you love it, then of course you can upgrade your gear and now we feel like this year the 80 is just about there but don't be overwhelmed Let's roll inappropriate. roll Wild. are you rolling okay he's rolling he's rolling yes right, let's do this. jillian hey nice to see you I, we I, never we would you? never shake hands if we just met each other know. but for the camera we will okay um tell us what this is all about i haven't talked to you since this this, this what is what are you doing citizen j podcast yeah it's, what are you doing it's my I, we just released it this week okay uh, cool. so we're super excited to be here and talking about it yeah um, obviously there's a lot of podcasts out there but yep. i feel like one having a female perspective yep. and having this adventurous lifestyle has mm -hmm. really, I don't know, I just have a lot to say, I guess. Good. I like to talk, right but on. I want to bring on people that have stories that have inspired me or right. that can, or vulnerability. Honestly, I think the vulnerability yep. of individuals. So I don't qualify, but I know some people that might, you okay, know. Okay, we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> So Very cool. That's the that's the premise of what we're doing. Right on. Um, obviously, my base is overland off road. Yeah, yeah. But that's not where I want to stay. I think right. I want to talk. I want to talk to just the community at large, right. artists, mu musicians, whoever has awesome. something to say. Awesome. So Very here we cool. are. Where do people find it? I mean, it's it's citizen it's Citizen J podcast. Citizen, clearly, yeah, yeah. Citizen J podcast. Um, we're on YouTube, iTunes, awesome. Spotify. If you go to YouTube, you get a video element, and I'm I'm really proud of how that turned out. My cool. team has been amazing. Awesome. So yeah. Is this your beast here? A 1967 Kaiser. Yes, it is. For crying out loud, <laughs> what a beast! This is awesome. How long have you had this thing? Not long. Okay. So <laughs> it's been it's, yesterday. No. Yeah, we're we're lucky it got here, kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, awesome. it has a little work that needs to be done um, but it's it's such a showstopper we couldn't we couldn't resist bringing it it stopped me yeah. I was like this is awesome good cool it, my work is done I'll leave I'm done yeah okay <laughs> starting with introductions or I don't know do you have sound? Yep. Sound is good. Do you have his sound? Yes. I gotta finish my strawberries.
I feel like we should I start went to the, the... I went to the... Re now I'm spitting. I went to the Relentless Fabrication booth and they had Starburst. And now I can't talk about their product with my friend Nick. That's probably true. And also this time, last time we did a walk around video, you said you had asked to touch my bumper. This time oh. you didn't even ask. Hey, Nick, you're here. You're with Relentless Fabrication I here am. at the yeah. Expo West. And I, I, I can't keep up. You... You... Apparently you like to build rigs. I do, and especially during COVID when I wasn't traveling much and I was stuck at home. It was extremely dangerous to Nick's pocketbook because he was. kept collecting vehicles. I did. Um, so Nick is a friend of ours. You guys have seen him before. We go way back. We grew up together. Uh, no, we didn't, but we go way back. T Nick, this is a, a show pony. No, it's not. It is too. It's, no, it's not. It I'm, is too. Literally, the first comment of the day was that is a mall crawler, and I literally had to correct the person. <laughs> well, hold on. I was hold offended. On. Let me. You should be fully. <laughs> the reason. What the reason I said that is because this has a, a film history. So it does. Yeah, this movie was built. Uh, it was. Or <laughs> I said this movie's built. This <laughs> truck was built uh, with a bunch of trucks that were used in Fast and Furious Nine. Right. Uh, it was built by Evo. And the producer on that show was also the producer on the show LA's Finest. The truck was actually driven on the show LA's Finest. Got it. Season two, episode eight. <laughs> you can see this truck, Jessica Alba, this truck, you know, the doors are wrapped white with sheriff badges on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my buddy uh, picked it up after it had its Hollywood story and he didn't really drive it at all. It sat in his driveway about a yep. year and a half. And he said, I'm thinking about selling it. And I said, okay, how much? And then I uh, booked a plane ticket, went down there and bought the truck the next weekend. Right on. So this thing is an absolute beast. Since you got it, you've done just a couple of things to it. <laughs> I think you put uh, you put a new sticker on the warm yeah, winch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, tell them. So yeah. actually what I found out, I didn't really realize at the time, is when they build the trucks for Hollywood, they build a lot of them really quick. Yeah. And they don't actually make sure that anything performs at all. Right. Uh, so the drive shaft literally broke on day three of our ownership because the rear suspension geometry was not correct. The steering ram on the truck was only six inches, so the truck would only turn three inches each way. <laughs> and the lockers weren't wired up because who needs lockers in a movie? Like, right. <laughs> uh, and so there were a lot of other issues that we had to sort out, but eventually we did. And I could kind of walk you guys through the truck yep. and what it's set up with. Yep. Um, so going straight from the front, it's yep. a relentless front bumper. This is for a JT, it also fits a JL. I really like it. It's not quite a stubby bumper. It's not quite a full bumper. You don't have to do a frame chop like a lot of the bumpers out yep. there. It looks amazing, has a lot of angles on it. Like a lot of the Jeep bumpers, they're just a rectangle. Right. right? And it also, your factory lights can go down on the bottom so you can keep your factory fog lights. It allows Very you to cool. have a 12,000 pound winch in here and a little bit of amber light just to look, you know, in the hey, snow. We're, we're on the inside. Uh, we're sort of on the inside and we're in the know. Okay, for people who don't know, no, I'm making that up. But for people who don't know who Relentless Fabrication is, why does Nick Full Sand use Relentless Gear? So I don't want to trash any other companies, but let's just say I've built yeah. a few trucks now and I broke a lot of other companies' armor and the Relentless armor has never let me down. My nickname is Full Sand <laughs> and my Tacoma. <laughs> Uh, I have all the same armor I bought from Relentless and it has not let me down since 2014. So it'd be like seven years of hard yep. wheeling, 100, almost 100,000 miles of hard wheeling. Yep. I haven't broken any armor and I, I send it in the rocks and yep. fast across the desert. And if you want to see one of his trucks fall down a trail, watch this video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a Slick Rock <laughs> video of us, Michael and I both falling down Slick Rock. <laughs> Um, but yeah, my, the armor holds up. That's Great. why I use it and it's aesthetically pleasing. It's like a nice combination of the two. Right and he really thinks about things like, yeah. I want to be able to reach the clutch on the winch. Like a, a lot of companies, yeah, it's not, it's not yeah. worth it. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's, right. the, that's yep. the front bumper. The suspension, it's a long arm Evo kit. It comes with 12 inch coilovers and it comes with hydro bumps. And then I have a Dana 60 Ultimate front axle. That's a high pinion axle, 35 spline chromoly axle shafts. I have hydro assist steering from PSC with an anti-rock front sway bar. I did delete the Rubicon sway bar. That's been the number one question to the day here at Overland Expo. Yep. Why did you buy a Rubicon and rip everything off of it? Well, the answer <laughs> is I got the truck used and I really like the Rubicon seats. They're really right. nice. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> that's the only thing Rubicon left on the truck besides the four to one transfer case. Um, so yeah, the Very truck cool. the truck is fully built up front. I have 40 inch Nitto trail grapp grapplers with KMC beadlock wheels and I have manual hubs. So I have to get out and actually mm -hmm. lock the hub. Uh, I have custom relentless sliders. They are plate, a little bit of angle on them, and we got a nice little body protection panel. The truck yep. actually came with some body mounted sliders and body mounted sliders are not gonna hold up for what I do. Yep. So we took those off right away, welded some sliders to the frame, and then we filled in the old holes in the body with this new plate. Cool, right the, on. The rear is a lot of custom suspension. Because I had those geometry issues, uh, we ended up four linking the rear with a combination of kits. We used the Artec truss with the rock crawler upper control arms with the Evo lower arms and a coilover conversion kit uh, from Evo. I added the anti-rock sway bar in the rear because I got a little bit of weight up top now and uh, I have a wraparound relentless bumper we should probably check out. Let's check it out. All right, cool. So this is version one of the relentless rear high clearance bumper for the Gladiator. It's the first and only. Uh, they want me to see if I can break it. So we took it okay. to Mojave on right the way on. here. I'm gonna take it to the Rubicon in a couple weeks, see if I can break it. But this is a 40 inch tire, weighs exactly 150 pounds on the wheel. And it's pretty freaking solid. <laughs> like right. I would have to really <laughs> shake it to get it to move. And I'm gonna put my welder right here on the end because this Very is cool. like a panel. I can literally put whatever I want. Right on. It's a one handed opening experience. Yep. Locks in place. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. And I get to keep my hitch underneath. Yeah. The stock bumper is literally, we measured four inches down and four inches over. So it literally goes down to here with the hitch. So awesome. my departure angle is super improved. Very cool. I have these welded all the way through on the backside, right on the frame end. And I kept all my sensors. So yep. all my blind spot stuff still, or this is actually the backup sensors, the blind spots in the mirror. All that still works. And we added a camper super messy in here don't judge us we have a family on the road <laughs> oh it's locked and it's locked it's locked i can fix that it's a go fast camper very cool i've had it for a few weeks i got it used you know i'm king of used so yep. it popped up used in socal i yep. asked my boss for the day off work jumped in the truck drove 800 miles picked it up drove it back <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so now we have a go fast and I, I'm actually really happy with the access to get inside. Like, yeah. It's a nice frame. I can reach inside, grab something in the fridge yep. because the bed is so shallow on these. Yeah. I really can just, I can touch the bottom of the bed through the side. That is very cool. It's yeah. awesome. I'm really happy this with thing, it. For crying out loud, this thing is a freaking beast. I mean, it is awesome. It was what I yeah. was, it's a literally a rock lander. Like that's what yeah. it's an overland <laughs> rock crawler. It holds the whole family, right? right. And you can live comfortably on the road. Yep. And we haven't been denied. We took it out yep. to um, Prairie City. We climbed all the biggest rocks we could find. Yep. And it never let us down. It, it's Very 110 awesome. to one crawl ratio. <laughs> like it, it, and you, you put the tires at 10 PSI and it just kind of, it kind of goes. Drips over 14 everything. 14 inch coilovers in the rear with 12 inches in the front. Yep. That it, is awesome. It's man. an insane truck. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, king, king suspension. Oh yeah, yeah that's of course. Your deal. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm all king. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the Tacoma's yeah. king, the GX king. We did have to sell our Lexus to pay for it. You know. Yep. Yep. Money. Yep. You know, it's not unlimited. Yep. But uh, <laughs> it's literally all of the things I ever dreamed of on a truck. One ton axles with hydro assist with coilovers. Yep. Literally was my dream. I didn't know what truck it was going to end up on. I might have put it on a Toyota but I found a Jeep that I could like, you built, everything was on it. You built quite a few rigs and now you know. Yeah. Yep, that's yeah. awesome. Any cool. questions? Cool, no, none at all. Because <laughs> I'm gonna watch it fall down trails and stuff like that. It, this Nick, won't fall down. This Nick, is when just we gonna... say goodbye, we never shake hands, but let's shake hands for the camera. All right, Nick, thank we'll you very much. We'll thank you, you very much for the story. Okay, we'll see you later. <laughs>
what it is that you do and about outdoor uh, by four. Well, first off, Mike, it's, it's yeah. so good to visit yeah, with you. And absolutely. And as Mike said, I mean, we've known each other for years. We've yep. been very supportive of Overland Bound. Yep. Yeah, Outdoor by Four Magazine, we, uh, we've we been a title media sponsor uh, of the event since 2014. We launched uh, the title in 2013. Uh, the magazine is a, it's kind of a hybrid of a vehicle-based outdoors lifestyle magazine. So its right. focus is using the vehicle as a means to go out for vehicle-based adventure travel or overlanding, but also as a tool to get to a trailhead to go mountain biking and hiking and fly fishing and paddling and all these different types of outdoor pursuits that really kind of encompass um, what what I perceive as a vehicle-based adventure and what it really is all about. And, right. and uh, it, we've been in publication now for nine years, uh, which is crazy to think it's been nine yeah. years already. Right. Uh, but it's been an absolute blast. So the magazine, we publish it six times per year, uh, print, digital. We have an audio edition of the magazine. And we it's, have a podcast. And it's a gorgeous, uh, I mean, it's a gorgeous magazine. And you. I mean, yeah, it's, it's very, very a high quality and you don't need an internet connection or a battery to take this with you, which is awesome. Well, that's, that's the thing. You know, it, it's, it's, it's so peculiar because you know, the, the print realm as a whole has seen you know, a decline over the last decade. Yeah. And we've been in a very fortunate position given the uniqueness of content and given this market space too, where right. um, having a tangible product that you can read and look at, that's a break from your device yep. um, while you're in a backcountry setting or you're at home or wherever, um, has really proven to be um, a great thing for us as a, right. as a publishing house. And yeah, I mean, we're just so thankful. You made the comments, which I really appreciate regarding the look and feel of the magazine. And quite honestly, you know, I publish Outdoor by Four, but it's the team that I've got that really makes this magazine possible, as well as our readers. Now, Frank, you also have started doing some new um, podcast content yes. and for, yes. for folks on the go. And I know that our community, they spend a lot of time behind the wheel, so that's yeah. a perfect thing. But tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Yeah. So back in December of last year, so December 2021, um, we launched um, the first audio edition of Outdoor by Four, which in our market space was the first audio edition of any sort of magazine related to um, vehicle-based adventure travel. And the focus of that was to allow another channel of delivery of content um, that complements our print and our digital assets. Uh, the audio edition, um, we, we take snippets from the magazine, the print edition of the magazine, so basically four feature articles, our editor note, and one of our department pieces. And we offer it in an audio format that you can listen to on Google, Spotify, Apple, uh, as well as a downloadable MP3. And you can listen to it while you're in your car, uh, you can listen to it at home, at the yep. office, you know, anywhere where maybe holding a tangible print copy of the magazine or looking at the magazine in a digital format isn't as easy. Yep. You can listen to the magazine. Outdoorby4.com? Where can correct. people find out yep. about so it? So you can yeah. go to www.outdoorx4.com. Yep. Um, you can uh, read regularly published content related to product reviews, um, adventure destination features, and a myriad of other stories online. Um, you can get a preview of the digital edition of the magazine on the website. Um, you can listen to the magazine in audio format. It's completely free as well as the podcast. Just go to our audio page. I think it's outdoorby4.com slash audio dash edition or something like that. You'll find it from the toolbar. Yep. Um, and uh, you can subscribe as well. Just go to www.outdoorx4.com. Right on. Frank, thank you so much. Really Michael, appreciate it. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna. What kind of videos do you want to see? Oh, just uh, the camping videos and, yep. and some of the trail runs that you do and stuff like that. We're gonna do that. I know we're gonna go up to Moab pretty soon. I want to travel around the country and awesome. see all kinds of Overland Bound members. What if what if I do a video about Overland Expo tonight? What do you think about that idea? That'd be great. Okay, cool. I'll be watching. Tell everybody your name again. My name is Tim Roberts. Right on. Where are you from? Nice to meet you. All. Yeah, uh, from Santa Clarita Valley in uh, Southern California. Cool. Cool. Have a great day. All right. All right. Right on. Did you, Craig, did you drive down? I uh, flew down. You flew down. Yeah. Well, well yeah. from Alaska, and you needed to get here. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, you guys, I'm here with Craig from Alaska Overlander, and you do rentals in Alaska. We do. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your company. So we started in the middle of the pandemic, started with two vehicles. Uh, yep. We got into the business because we wanted to kind of get out there and explore with our family. Yep. We actually came here two years ago. Uh, and we went to the Grand Canyon and visited Sedona awesome. on a rental rig, did the expo, 
And like over the campfire every night, my wife and I were like, you know, we could do this in Alaska, offer the same services in Alaska. Right. We started off with two vehicles, and then now we're up to nine vehicles this year. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, well, you, you probably are experiencing the increased interest folks have for getting outside, and yeah. Alaska is definitely an epic destination. It, it really is, and yeah. especially from the moment. There's, there's two camps, you know, there's people who, uh, I'm gonna build my rig, I'm gonna come all the way to Alaska with my rig, um, and you know, it's a time commitment. Not everybody right. can actually have that time or the finances to make that work. Right. Um, and that's what we were trying to do is offer something that was, you know, an option that people could jump on a plane, right? Grab their clothes, and everything is included in the rig, and then they get out there and explore Alaska. And awesome. And maybe this introduction, and then yep. that way they know next time they come out what places they want to do when they bring their own rig, right? Uh, or maybe it could be the epic journey that they're doing. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Now you, um, uh, you worked with our friends. Uh, Kevin and Sarah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Lifestyle Overland. Yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah. us a little bit about about that. What it, what was that? What was involved? Yeah, absolutely. So first off, they are exactly as they seem on the videos. Yep. They're amazing people. Yeah. Uh, and you know, fortunately, we can hopefully say we're friends. Yeah. Um, but it was just a spur of the moment. We were. Uh, chatting with them through we're obviously Patreon followers of theirs. Yep. We just reached out to them and said, hey, do you want to come to Alaska? They were like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, Perfect. Uh, yeah. And made the journey up there and we got Great. to, they spent uh, about uh, I think eight, ten days on their first trip. Yep. Uh, and you saw the content, yep. had a great time, yeah. it was amazing. So, yeah. yeah, very cool. Yeah. So how do people get a hold of you guys if they're considering a trip to Alaska? Uh, www, obviously, yep. alaskaoverlander.com. Put it on the thing. Perfect, yep. right alaskaoverlander.com. <laughs> yeah. well, okay. they can follow us on Facebook and Instagram too as well. Awesome. Reach out to us. Great. And uh, consider us locals on tap too as well. So if yeah. you need help in regards to route planning, uh -huh. uh, what direction to go into, uh, what to do activities wise, we're here to help in regards to that too as well. Great. Yeah. Craig, thank you for talking to me. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Thanks. Cool. You, got, you guys, hey, I, I, I'm speaking with Jake of Smart Cap. Jake. Yep. Walked by, walked by, and saw your your builds, and I was like, "This is this is absolutely amazing." And you guys, there's going to be a, a little bit of a reveal later, a little bit of that sneak peek, so stay tuned. Um, Jake, tell us about SmartCap. Yeah. yeah. So SmartCap is a South African company. Um, really, what we focus on is a stainless steel modular truck cap, and yep. it's modular in a couple different ways. First of all, it's actually a five-piece cap, so it doesn't come all together. It actually okay. comes in a box, which allows us to distribute it easier, to send it to people's homes, right. um, and then they can assemble it themselves and put it on the truck bed. So that's a big deal for us. Okay. The other thing, because it's stainless steel, gives us a lot of strength, which you know most people in the Overland uh, market are used to doing uh, racks, yeah. and the racks, all their gear gets dirty, And but that's the only thing that really holds a rooftop tent. Typical right. fiberglass stuff does not. Right. These hold 770 pounds. That's huge. Static, yeah. so you can easily rooftop tent on this. So uh, it's super secure. You know, we have it, uh, all the doors are locked. They're key to like. Uh -huh. um, so it's going to be a big deterrent for anybody going in and trying to get your gear. Right on. Um, so they're all very similar to this, but they're vehicle specific. This is on the third gen Tacoma, uh, and all of our smart caps have great access into the side of the bed. Right. So on. you've got the rear door and the two side doors. Uh, the cool thing is you can leave it open and have access in to get your gear or we have a couple really cool accessories that you can bolt into the side right and any of those accessories can be added to the cap later or they can be taken back out so it's flexible and modular in that aspect as well great um, so i think Let's, you should take a look yeah absolutely so organization is the biggest thing right and so uh i i think this is amazing <laughs> yeah so this is one of the coolest accessories we have yep. this is our camp kitchen and this just gets you super organized because right. when you get to the campsite, the last thing you want to do is ruffle through bins to get all yep. your, your gear together. Yeah. So with this, we've got a nice stove that flips out. Just pop that out and you can cook right on the uh, side of your truck. Amazing, um, that's so cool. Also, uh, because some trucks are pretty high, this stove is removable, so you can actually take it out and put it on a table and cook right. from there. You also got a little hidden cutting board here. You can pull it out halfway and kind of utilize it there or you can take it all the way out. Yep. And then of course, we've just got a bunch of GSI nice equipment for um, anything that you need. You've got right. tumblers, you've got nice knives and cut, uh, sharpeners, all of the silverware, all, everything has its place. So it's yep. super organized um, and easy to access everything. 
Uh, we really try to make it so that, you know, when you get to the campsite, you don't have to think anything about it, just yep. bam. And then now, when you're done, put yeah, the you're, back up and then you're out. Yeah, so your kitchen setup there was like five to 10 seconds. Click, yeah, click, there yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you already said that's it. Like yeah. when you're ready to go, <laughs> just flip this Boom. thing back up in there. Boom. And you're done. That is awesome. And every so cool. everything stays in its place. I mean, all this foam, everything is all yep. pre-done. So when you buy this, it actually comes with everything and you awesome. just bolt it in. Awesome. So it's really now, nice. you mentioned you can take this out, you can set it on a table. So speaking of a table, yes. let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah. So on the interior of the smart cap, <clears throat> we actually try to utilize any dead space that we have. And typically, a table gets thrown on the bottom and all your gear goes on top and you gotta take everything out. Yep. Instead, we have a bracket, unlatches, and you can pull your table all the way out and set it up. So, and that and, fits in any smart cap. You can do that in any cap. And so that is the, that's the first thing that comes out, right? So yep. you, you just pull that down, boom, you've got a surface. Now you can do whatever you want. Start pulling out your gear, yep. setting anything up that you don't wanna set on the ground and it just locks into place up here. Yep. So it's super easy to put it away and you're good to go. Can you tell me a little bit about the, pro, uh, the, the, the platform, the vehicle line this will work with? What type of vehicles this will work with? Yeah, so yeah. We're, since we're new to the US, um, yep. we started with all 2020 fitments. Mm -hmm. So basically the easy way to look at it is we do everything current model mm -hmm. except for eight foot beds and we haven't introduced Nissans yet. Okay. So you're talking Tacomas, Rangers, Gladiators, yep. Colorados, and then we do the full size trucks. So Rams, F-150s, Super cool. Duty. So, and it's, like I said, it's all vehicle specific. So, you know, the cap is designed to fit the lines of the truck. Yep. Um, it's not boxy or square. I mean, we, we even taper it to how the tailgate should go so that it doesn't look like it's something universal. I mean, this is yeah. meant to look really good yeah. on your truck. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, all right, is there anything else we should know about this model before we look at the big boy over there? Yeah, um, you know, one other thing is we do have, um, this is the adventure model. We've got two other models. One's really more for commercial. And yep. then we have one called the Sport. That features glass in the side. Uh -huh. So it's a little easier to see out. Also, it has a little slider built in. So if you've got pets and you typically put them in the back, yep. then you've got some ventilation for them. Uh, that's a cool feature. Um, one other thing I'd like to say about the, the regular caps, and this applies to all of our products. Yeah. They're all built with a positive pressure air vent. Uh, so it's hard to see from here, but basically what it does is it sucks in clean air from the top and has a filter in it. And that way, you, when you're going down a dirty road, usually when you close off the bed, there's a tendency to suck up dirt in the back. Yeah. And so that protects against that. So actually, with the smart cap, you'll remain a lot less dusty inside. Awesome. And it works in the rain. It's, it's not going to take anything on. So it's, yep. it's a really cool feature. Oh, that's awesome. I also see that there's a pass-through. It looks like there's a pass-through. Yep, like, pass-through yep. window, yep. little slider window. So if you've Very got cool. you know, a little cutout like in the Tacomas, it pretty much matches up. So right again, you can, you know, if you've got pets back there and you want to kind of keep a flow, it's all Very ready. cool. Very cool. Yeah. Hey, Jake, let's take a look at that one. Yeah. <laughs> this is probably getting the most attention at the event, I gotta say. I gotta say. Uh, so, this is our bed replacement system. Yeah. And um, actually, what you're looking at is, uh, is not just one part. Um, this is both a flatbed and what we call the Smart Cap XL. Yep. So, really, the flatbed has a headache rack and it comes here and down. So that's why you have strap down points because you can run this with no cap on top. Got um, it. And then we add the cap uh, to that. So this is a piece, headache rack, and a flatbed. Yep. And then this is the piece on top of it. Yeah. All right. And the flatbed's going to come with storage on each side. So you got storage there. On the other side, we you know mount a compressor. So different things that you're going to need. Keep it you know nice and dry uh, because everything's sealed. You know you've got weather stripping all over everything. Yep. Um, and then. The smart cap got massive amount of access to the inside. So on the Gladiator, it's actually really nice because it's actually adding a full foot because this is a six foot long flatbed versus right. your typical five foot bed. Right. Um, you know, again, all stainless steel, holds 770 pounds on top. You have similar features where you've got the, the table can go in, in here. Right. The Molly panel is standard, so you can strap gear. Really strong struts, you probably noticed that, so mm -hmm. it can hold a lot of weight. Um, and then again, just, we keep a pretty blank slate in here. You yeah. know, we've got fridge slides and things like that, but really it's kind of designed to be like, hey, 
What are you going to do? How do you want to use it? Build it out yourself. And build it out yourself. Yeah. yeah. Just add, and you can obviously uh, drill into the stainless steel. You can set up your auxiliary power with Red Arc and brands like that. So right. Tell me about the tire mount on the back. Yeah. Tire is, is that part of the design? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We've, got, we've got two plates on the back. Um, we provide the tire mount option and, of course, the gas can option. Or you could do two tires. Right. Um, spares. Um, so that stuff is standard for us. You certainly could adapt that to other gear that you're going to do. Yep. Again, you can get creative. I mean, I think in our yep. environment here, yep. people are getting creative. They're going to build their own. They're yeah. going to do their own their own thing. But we're not going to leave you out from having the ability to have a kitchen. So in the uh, bed replacement, we have a rear drawer that we offer the kitchen as well. <laughs> so same setup. That uh, is awesome. Super organized. <laughs> and that's an accessory, so you don't have to do, the, do our right, kitchen. You can right. load that up with any gear you have. But you a, a drawer slide back here and any kind of storage right here is, is awesome. I yeah. mean, any kind of, you know, maximizing storage space. Very, yeah. very cool. Yeah, so um, the, this product is officially not released, but we're uh -huh. hoping um, as of 2022, by the end of the year, we'll start to yep. introduce this. Um, the caps are available now. Yep. Right now, we're on a little bit of a back order. It kind of depends. It's all over the board. Sometimes it's in stock. So, um, you know, we have a full dealer base. You can yep. contact dealers for the product, and they can either back order it, they can get it for you, they can install, assemble. And so. you mentioned off camera that you guys are are, are you guys have a new North American uh, manufacturing facility coming yeah. online. We're in Dallas, Fort Worth now. Yep. Uh, cool. That facility is actually um, you know, operational, but we're not producing product as of yet. Yep. So we're hoping July, August, we're going to start uh -huh. to see that. That's going to help us, you know, really kick out enough product that the yep. marketplace is demanding and help us get this product out um, so people can start using it. Yep. Tell me about um, any uh, the the load bars for a rooftop tent. I imagine that that could be a popular option for folks. Yeah. So um, what kind of customization? Uh, has to happen for you to put a rooftop tent on this. All of our caps come with the rails, so that's awesome. pre-installed. Great. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Cool. If you decide to get load bars later, you can do that. We have our own set of load bars. We have a platform rack. We have a drop rack, which is really cool. I wish I could show it here, but basically one side pulls out, drops down. Uh -huh. You can load from the side. So you should check it out on the website. Yep. Um, and then, of course, you know, if you really want to get custom and you, you want to use other products from around the industry it is adaptable you know if you're running kayaks like we have on the other truck right you know you can utilize Thule and, and Yakima who have a little more options for that kind of thing so it's somewhat universal to kind of make it fit your needs great awesome anything else we should know uh, check out rsismartcap.com for okay. more on the products yep and um, yeah no just uh, thanks for checking us yeah. out great Jake thanks a lot really yeah, appreciate nice talking it yeah you. And send it. All right, let's go have dinner. Hey, you guys, uh, you don't know. So, Mike, Social Pants, the video yesterday and lots of Overland Bound videos, he shoots them. Mike, show your face. Do you have the right? Okay, there, he, sh he showed his chin. Social Pants on Instagram and stuff and his booth truck and everything. Sorry. That'll be a clip at the end. I'm going to do a takeout.